With the rising sun in the mornings, one can see the Single Sisters house. The house faces west and is located on lot 15 in Salem Square. The Single Sisters moved into the house on April 5, 1786, and for many years it was the largest brick building in Salem. Its original cost was $5,000. I am a single sister, and I lived in the big house with its mossy tile roof, extra wide scrub floorboards, and warm kitchen. It was our home and our place of business. Being a Moravian, I was in a choir, or system, that divided us by our ages, gender, and marital status. Each choir had its own responsibilities and special events. In my case, being a single sister, I lived in the single sister's house. That meant we all lived, studied, worked, and played together. Girls typically entered the house at the age of 14 and were under these strict rules enforced by the fledgerant or lady superintendent. Our single sister's home had three floors. On the first floor, we had lots of rooms that were for daily living and occupations to provide for ourselves. We were very industrious and hardworking, and most importantly, we were self-supporting women. We had many occupations, and our wages varied. For example, working in the garden or doing the daily wash earned two shillings per day. If we did the wash for the week, we would earn seven shillings. Teachers in the sister's house were paid in English shillings, equal to 25 cents per week. The cost of dinner in the choir was three shillings per week. We were allowed to eat breakfast and supper with the families for which we worked in the community. If we were fortunate to have worked for a family for a year, we ate all of our meals with that family and received seven pounds per year. One of the rooms was a sick room. Women were considered more delicate because we were from the flesh of man entitled us to serve as nurses or sick waiters. In another room, we sold our finger works, sewing and embroidery. We tailored men's clothing and sold hand-stitched soft buckskin gloves, the favorite thing of the young brethren. Since we did not have running water, we piped water into the house from a well. Others had to use buckets. Our well was on lot 14, adjacent to our house. The water drained through a hole in the stone foundation in the east wall of the kitchen below the south window. On the second floor, we had our chapel, and the third floor was our sleeping chamber. It was a great house to live in with my blessed single sisters. We had many blessings at the time. We had a necessary or a toilet area where cool dormitory is today. We had a long weave house, a wash house, an ironing room, a small smoke house, and woodsheds behind the north end of the house. On a site nearby, we had our linen weave house, a pig pen, and horse stables. The cow stables were located in the very spot where Strong Dormitory and the refectory now stand. One of my favorite places was our garden, which is now Bidding Dormitory. We grew vegetables, including beans, potatoes, tomatoes, which were called love apples, and asparagus. The asparagus was our prized addition. We grew currants, gooseberries, and raspberries. Our herb garden was laden with mint, parsley, sage, thyme, lavender, and rosemary. We were blessed with fruit trees so we could make jellies, apple, peach, plum, and damson. We kept our gardens beautiful with borders of violet and rose bushes. We loved lilac and called them keys to heaven. We even built a summer house between the flower beds to knit visit and enjoy afternoons with each other while drinking coffee. As Moravians, we were industrious and creative. We used vegetables, bark, nuts, and other natural resources to dye our wool for clothing. We spun and wove clothing for our beds, table linens, and our garments. And for candles, we dipped beeswax. We found it used for everything. Being a single sister, then we all had a lot to do in a day's time. With the first sound of the bell at 5.15 a.m., we all rose to the start of our day. If someone awoke before this time, she was to keep quiet in the bed till the bell rang. We got out of our beds and walked down without any noise or confusion. Once we were downstairs, we would wash ourselves to prepare for the day's work. We wore lace bodices, full skirts, and white linen caps 
that were tied under our chin. After morning prayer, we would attend breakfast together. This was around 6.30 a.m. After breakfast, we would go back up to our sleeping quarters and make our beds. We would often then begin our work for the day, providing for ourselves and others. Some of us were teachers. We were proud to be able to educate Moravian and non-Moravian girls at the girl boarding school. I was one of those teachers. Typically, our students attended class from 8 a.m. until 11 a.m. I would begin this class with a roll call which included the girls rising and curtsying at their name call. The girls reviewed yesterday's history, geography, arithmetic, and astronomy. At times, I would call the girls to the front of the class to recite their answers. Education was as serious for us women as it was for our men in the community. We ate what we called dinner from 11.30 a.m. till 12 noon. It was always a light meal, often fruit. After our meal, if the weather was nice, we went for a walk. I remember one day during our walk, some girls caught a little fawn. One student put it into her apron and brought it back to the single sister's house. We kept it as a pet. The time between dinner and the afternoon school session was often used to prepare the students' sewing work. Ornamental work was very important. It was taught for two hours each day. Coming into the school, the girls were taught to work with very narrow taffeta. They wove flowers, wreaths, and purses. Following the training, the students learned how to perforate stiff paper and adorn it with designs using colored silk ribbons. Next, samplers were made with initial letters using a fancy design. Last, they embroidered on linens and clothing using Berlin wool. In doing this, we would embroider scenes of animals, funeral designs, or pictures of loved ones surrounded by nature. The finger work classes were accompanied by music and language courses. From 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., the core classes were once again taught. In the spring and summer, when the days were longer, we would usually walk after supper. Also during the evening, we wrote in our journals. Every member of the Moravian community was expected to keep a journal, which was to be read during their funeral. In our journals, Christ was referred to as bridegroom. When the town bell rang first each evening, all who were in the yard were to go inside their rooms. At bedtime, we attended evening prayer in silence and then went to bed still and orderly at 8.30 p.m. Single sisters were reminded to close their shutters in the evening when we lit our candles. I recall a poem written by Miss Emma Augusta Lehman. There lieth a village on the hill under the cedar trees, calm and peaceful and white and still, the house of the summer breeze. Would I were at rest in the village still, a mourner wept alone? Would I were with them on the quiet hill beneath the mossy headstone? But the master saith, the time is not yet, thy work is still to be done. Tis scarcely noon, there are foes to be met, the evening will bring thee home. In 1988, Miss Amy Van Vleck, a colleague of Miss Emma Lehman, wrote the first reunion song for the Alumni Association of the Salem Female Academy. Let us remember this. But if on earth no more we meet, may we enjoy in union on God's own great commencement day, a heavenly reunion. God bless our alma mater then, and us who soon must sever, and may her teachings, good and true, abide with us forever. <laughs>